Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're uh, back in the shop today and this is just a quick video to uh, show how to make a custom rivet, rivet length. Um, may not be of interest to everyone um, and it might be obvious to most but if you're a guy out there and uh, you're building for the first time and you don't you know you have no experience with any of this stuff um, this might be helpful to you. Otherwise, I hope you find it interesting, but other than that, here we go. So, um, riveting on my spar, and uh, I'm riveting through um, 532 thousandths material, which is the spar itself, and then the 32 thousandths for each attach angle, either one or two. In this particular case, I'm riveting through two, so I'm riveting through 532 thousandths um, along with um, another 64 thousandths. So, I got my little handy dandy rivet tool, rivet, uh, let's see what's this thing called, rivet sizer. Here, I'll try to show you on the screen here. I don't know if you can see that. Rivet sizer, it's a, it's an app. And all I do is type in what I'm going to, what I need to do, and select, or you know, the thickness of the material total, and then select the rivet size, and it'll tell me, and if you look here, I don't know if it'll focus in, but this is telling me I need a, a size 13 rivet. Um, right there, right in that area. Well, it's actually a 13.286, so it's more than a 13, but it's less than a 14. And you're thinking, well, does it really make that much of a difference? And yeah, it does. In, in some instances, it certainly does. You don't want to be, you don't want your uh, bucktail to be too, too thin in thickness, or not, you know, not wide enough with the uh, shop head to be wide. So you, you know, the goal is to have it half a diameter thick and one and a half diameters wide. So <clears throat> I need at least a 13 and a half size rivet. But I don't have any 13 and a half. The biggest I've got in number fives is 13 or I have a number 16 which is one inch long. Rivet lengths are in 16 so 16 16 is one inch. Too long. If I use a 16 it'll baby shoe over, the, the rivet won't form right, it'll be a disaster. So I need to cut this rivet down to the appropriate size, which is like 13 and a half. So 13 sixteenths plus another half a sixteenth, or 27 30 seconds, I guess is what that would work out to be. So there's ways you can do that. You can buy a rivet cutter from like Avery or Brown or Aircraft Spruce, and it's kind of like a screw cutter if you've ever used one of those. You just slide the, the, the rivet in squeeze it and it slices it off. Problem is, is it does, it only does full sizes. So you can cut a 12, a 13, a 14, a 15, but you can't cut a 13 and a half or whatever. Plus, they're like 40 bucks. Here's a piece of scrap steel I got from the scrapyard for zero dollars. And if you can see right here, I drilled a 5 30 seconds hole. Actually, I've drilled two of them, but there's a 5 30 seconds hole in this piece of plate steel right here. And uh, what I do is, I run my rivet into this hole, and if it'll go through there, you, now you can see the rivet sticking out. And then I just take my whiz wheel on my little die grinder, and I just die grind that off till it's flush, and that will now be the size of that rivet. And then I adjust how much rivet sticks out by putting washers of the appropriate size under the head until I get the right combination of washers, I need five, I only have four here. Where's the, where'd my fifth one get off to? It was in my hand, but it dropped off. Maybe I'll use this one on the floor. So for this particular rivet, I need five of these washers. So you can see, I got five of them stacked up underneath the head right there. And what I do is I just slide this rivet through the hole. And now you can see not as much is sticking out. I don't know if you can see it as well. So, but I do have some sticking out, and rather than grind and grind and grind away on that, I just take my dikes here and I kind of cut that off as close as I can get it. Then I take a towel for my hand, if you, if you don't have a set of gloves, just take a towel or something, because you want to hold this rivet in to the piece of metal, but the end of that rivet's going to get hot when I go to grind this off. So I'm going to grind this off for now, it's going to get a little noisy, but here we go. And bear with me, my, uh, my uh, 
disc is really dull and I don't have another one and the place where I get them isn't open today so I had a, this press on so I'm kind of by brute force getting this done but here we go. Okay so now that rivet is sized to about 13 and a half sixteenths or 27 30 seconds. I'll just take a device here and kind of carefully push it out. It comes right out and you can see now you can see the head, I don't know if you can see it, head's nice and square but it's got a real hard real hard 90 on here and that'll that has a tendency to bite on the hole when you're trying to drive it through so what I do is I I'll take my washers off here and I just take my die grinder in my hand try to and I just kind of screw it up a little bit, spin this around, and just knock that edge off. Let's get a little nice chamfer on it. And uh, you can tell, you can see it all the way around. You just probably can't see it on the camera, but you can definitely see it. So what's important about this is, is that, yeah, I could take, you know, I could take a number 16 rivet, and I could take my dikes, and I could say, ah, it looks like about a 13 and a half, and I can dike that bad boy off like that. But if you look real close, I don't know if we can focus in on it, you'll see that the edge is, it's pinched off. It kind of comes up to a point, you know, on the end there, and the whole deal. And this rivet will not drive properly because either the bucking bar or, in my case, the, uh, the drive set for my C-frame is not going to sit on this square. And the first impact, it's going to drive it off one way or the other. So you want to have that rivet head be nice and square just like this one is. And now I'm set to drive what was a number 16 rivet is now a 13 and a half which is exactly the size I need for the proper bucktail, the shop head, the whole deal and I'm on my way again. Hand, hand cutting rivets is time consuming kind of a pain in the butt but you know uh, scratch building an airplane isn't uh, done overnight anyway so it's better to do it right now than wish I did as the wing was folding in flight and I was spiraling to my death. But that's another story. Anyways, that's how you uh, that's how you can make a you know a one dollar rivet sizing tool out of a piece of plate from the scrap yard, and uh, it works really well. All right, I hope you found it informative, and uh, until next time, uh, we'll see you in the shop.